Thanks, Mick. You say that uh, uh, this year's movies are, are not that bad. I mean, there's a little yeah. bit, there's a little sense of sort of damning with faint praise. I, I, well, I guess so. Well, it's just that traditionally the, the category of best picture has been fairly uninspiring. Uh, if you look at the movies that have won best picture over the years, they're, they're very rarely the, the, the real best film of the year. And in fact, very often, the, the best movie isn't nominated. And of course, this is subjective, but a good measure of it is just the fact that a lot of the best pictures haven't stood up to the test of time. On the other hand, the uh, best actress and actor categories, although um, you could argue, anybody could argue that these performances weren't the best of their time either, they generally, those performances stand up. So that the, the Academy seems to be the most um, artistically, artistically nervous or um, uh, inhibited in some ways in their choice of best picture for some reason. Um, I guess it's, it's the ultimate statement of, of what they're about that given year and, and they're worried about it. Whereas the, the acting categories are generally okay. So when I think about it, I'm thinking of the best pictures and I'm looking and saying, wow, these, there's nothing on here that's embarrassing. Right. Were there any big pictures this year, any sort of larger box office pictures, larger in scope pictures that you thought were, were more worthy than the recognition that they received? Well, I was mentioning Chronicles of Narnia, which right. I think was, might have been the number one box office movie of the year. I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, that, that, would have been, that would have been terrific. And, of course, The New World is a huge movie, but it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very strange art film, and that would have been worthy, and that was, I think, the best movie of the year. Um, but not, no, not the big ones. I think that it's been a year for small ones. I mean, if I was going to, to take uh, one or two of the, uh, titles out and replace them, uh, I would replace, um, well, I would take three out. I mean, you know, this is me, you know. <laughs> We're all doing, everybody does this. I would, take, uh, I would take Narnia, I would take New World, but I would also take Match Point, Woody Allen's movie, right. uh, and stick that in too. And I'd, I'd, I'd take Crash Out, I'd take uh, Munich, what else would I take out, since I'm king of the world at this moment here? Uh, at good night point? and good luck. I'd take good night and good luck, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd pull that one out. All right. Yeah. How many of these movies do you think will sort of meet that criteria you talk about in terms of the test of time? I had the opportunity recently, and I don't even know how it came up, but to see Network again. Yeah. And realize that that picture had been nominated for an Academy Award 30 years ago, yes. in 1976. And in that same year, Network... Taxi Driver, Rocky, and Bound for Glory were four of the five nominees. Yeah. Those are all pictures that pretty much stand the test yeah, of time. Say, yeah. If we look at these pictures 30 years from now, what does it look like? It's impossible. It's absolutely impossible to know. And the reason why is because it's impossible to know, it's impossible to know what the future will value. Because it's impossible to know what the future will be like. If we were to guess, for example, what the world in 1976, because I actually remember 1976, if we were going to guess what the world would be like in 2006, a lot of our guesses in 1976 would have, would have been wrong. Uh, it's, it's very hard to say. If, you get a, if, you, if there's a, a, a huge war, let's say, or some kind of transforming upheaval, uh, the equivalent of World War I, a horrible series of terrorist events, uh, the things that the future then will value will be things that in some way would seem to have predicted those things happening. Now, it doesn't mean that, that the people knew it was going to happen, but it would be something in harmony with, with the conception of the world that the people would have as a result of going through these things. So when I look at these, this list of the movies now, it's, it's really impossible to know. I mean, I, I think that, I don't think there's any way, but I could be wrong, that, that Crash would be particularly valued in 30 years because I think Crash is, is in a sense, nostalgic now. I could be wrong. Brokeback Mountain is, is very interesting because I don't know what to, I mean, I, I, I like Brokeback Mountain. I think it's a good movie, but I don't know what the ultimate importance of Brokeback Mountain is. It's a gay movie made by straight people, written by straight people, that was made for straight people. 
Now, I have, it's made for straight people. It really is. Now, I, and, and I know that there's a huge gay audience, and I hear from the gay audience all the time in letters. Uh, people hold this movie in reverence, or at the same time, then they don't. Then they, they, think, they think it's ridiculous. I don't know if this movie is going to be, guess who's coming to dinner 20 years from now? You know? I, it could be considered, uh, you know, so... Um, I mean, because basically what the movie does, and, and this is, I've written about this, and, and I've, I think, been intentionally misunderstood by some people, but I don't who cares. Um, <laughs> the, the movie deliberately bypasses the issue of sexuality and just puts it all in terms of love, so that the two guys act straight, are straight, live straight lives, but, of course, they're gay, and they're in love with each other. And what, what the pro- point of the movie is to make a, a straight audience not have to deal with the issue of sexuality, but instead have to deal with the issue of, of you know, is this fair? I mean, they love, they, they love each other. And, and how would you like it if you couldn't be with somebody that you were in love with and that you had to keep it a secret and you had to go through life acting? You know, how is that? And, and, they, and then they put it out in the middle of America where, uh, you know, in the middle of the, 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 the wide open West so that it, it calls to mind American archety- archetypes and, and you say, well, I mean, if you can't be yourself, if you can't be completely yourself in the United States with all this space around you, I mean, where, where are these guys supposed to go? So I don't know if that's like absolutely brilliant and something that people are going to say, wow, that was the beginning of something amazing or that is amazing. Or if 30 years from now, they will say, let's guess who's coming to dinner. And this is too much of a, a straight take on a gay experience. Got no idea. So the answer is, that's a long answer to say, who knows? You know, right. 